Welcome into Five on Your Sideline. I am Corey Miller. That is Annie Crawl, and it is district championship night in <sighs> high school football. It's the kind of night that can make a good year a great year. No kidding, Corey. And it's St. Charles from, from St. Charles County to Jefferson County. We're going to have the entire area covered. It is a big night here. So, Corey, will you do the pleasure? Will you kick us off? Let's get right into it. Hard to get a better matchup than this. Class 5 state champs, Francis Howe, against Class 6 state champs, CBC. They're now both in Class 6. Something's got to give. Richard Rankin, he gets a carry for Howe. He gets in for 6. Back and forth game all night long. CBC can break off some big runs, too. Jacob Grunwald does just that into Viking territory. The cadets needed their defense tonight too. They swarm how QB, Adam Shipley. They're all over him on this play for the sack. And CBC is gonna hold, well, he gets a couple yards on a sack. But CBC holds on in a thriller. They advance with a 28 to 27 victory in a battle of defending state champions. What a game, Annie, you're up. While well, Eureka High School faced off against Rockwood Summit in Fenton, Missouri tonight, Eli Stevens, no surprise to anybody, is the Summit's powerhouse running back, and he wasted absolutely no time in adding to his historic number of touchdowns. This senior just flying past everyone to get to the end zone in the first quarter. But the home team wouldn't hang on to their initial lead for too long. Eureka punching in for a quick tunnel touchdown, some offensive linemen making the way for him. Though that wouldn't be the last set of points for Trevor Kodak as Summit tried to regroup before the half, and oh no, Kodak's back's got a pass, he's gone. Yeah, no one's really gonna touch him on that. Wow. The sophomore taking this one all the way to the house. The Wildcats will be the one moving on with a final score, 35-17. Ooh, great game, upset in that one. Slew to Smet, district title. Man, it doesn't get any better than that matchup. First play from scrimmage, Spartans are ready to go. Demarion White, Gets his number called and he explodes into slew territory. Looks like he's going to go all the way. Not quite. Still a big run. This was a game of defense in the first half, though. Junior Bill stands tall on third down. Huge tackle to Smet. Forced to settle to for a field goal. Spartan defense was a force, too. A couple Spartans, including Quincy Bias, they get to Marco Sansone for the sack. Then on offense for DeSmet, Dylan Duff to Colin Griffin. Big gain into the slew red zone. But again, they settle for an Ethan Waymuller field goal. It was 6 0 at halftime, and it stayed low scoring. DeSmet, though, wins 19 13 to beat their rivals and win the district crown. Well, we have to talk about Clayton and Lutheran North after having one of the most successful playoff runs in recent history. Clayton was looking to defend themselves against the Lutheran North Crusaders. However, it was Lutheran North's game to lose, and they knew it as their running back just waltzes in nonchalantly <laughs> against another guy in the first quarter for an easy touchdown. But they decided to actually tack on two points for this, walking in once again to the end zone. And then Clayton tried to respond, and they would with their own touchdown, not to mention a little, ah, how about a two-point conversion with a nice floating pass up nice. over easy. <laughs> However, it would be the Greyhounds who were knocked out of the playoffs this year. Lutheran North wins with a final score of 54 to 14. Hillsboro and Festus played an all-time classic tonight. First quarter, second play of the game for Festus. Jeremiah Cunningham goes deep and he finds Will Reese who makes oh, the catch, runs it in for the touchdown. Seven nothing Tigers. Festus would take a 21 nothing lead in the first quarter, but Hillsboro storms back. Second quarter, Peyton Brown finds room and he is loose down the sidelines. He gets all the way down to the 13 yard line for Hillsboro. A few plays later, his brother, Preston Brown, finishes the drive with a QB run. 21-7 Hawks in the second, but Hillsboro storms all the way back to beat Festus 29-28 and win the district championship. Wow, what a game. That is wildly impressive, but Ritter and MICDS final drive before halftime in a close game. Antoine McKay is a magician. Look at this right here. He calls his own number with nobody open and scrambles into MICDS territory with time winding down. After a few penalties to that game, Ritter is forcing a fourth down and long, and the Rams get to McKay for the sack. Huge play to head into the half, but Ritter does defend home turf. They keep their back-to-back -back dreams alive with a 60 to 24 final score. Oh, the Lions are tough once again this year. Zumalt North and St. Dominic was a dandy tonight. Check out this play. Thomas Pulliam is Mr. Do Everything for St. Dominic. This is one of his best plays as a Crusader. One-handed catch, he's gone for six. We're gonna show it again and slow it down so you can see it. Check this out, Annie. Just one-handed catch, I here can. it comes. Right oh, there, tip great toe play. In. Zumalt North, not intimidated though. Jaden Burleson, he gets the carry and he goes up the sideline for a big game. 
points gain, that is. Burleson, he's going to finish it off himself as well. Six points right up the middle and into the end zone. Zumalt North goes on the road and defeats St. Dominic 27-17 to win the district title. Which they needed to do, but it is Troy Buchanan who made the trip all the way to Columbia to take on Rockbridge tonight. It was a rough one for the Trojans. Quarterback Hunter Keen tries to find his receiver across the field, but it's picked off by Rockbridge who runs it all the way back for a pick six. Rough night for Troy as Rockbridge wins 38-7. to and Bruins from Columbia sure are tough. Well, one of the best teams in our area hails from Sekman High School. The Jaguars have built up a formidable program and came into tonight's district championship against Jackson with a 10-0 record while allowing an average of just over six points a game. It has been a steady climb for the Jags and they're proud of their progress and the chance to win a district title at home tonight. You know, the last five years, you know, we, we've gone from not winning a lot of games to now consistently, you know, having over 150 kids in our program um, and then coming out and executing on the field and winning a lot of football games. It's a big challenge, but it's also a big opportunity for the team, you know, to really show what, what, we've, what we've worked for. Um, and it's really cool to kind of really truly feel like we have this Sekman football community, a tradition of what we do around here. Huge test on Sekman's hands with powerhouse Jackson coming to town. You see it on the scoreboard there. Jackson's pretty darn good. Jags had some fireworks too, though. Flea flicker, and it works. Kate Heinmeier oh, ends up with bomb. it. Tells that defender, get off me. He's in the end zone for six. But like I said, Jackson is a powerhouse. Some huge runs through a Sekman defense that, like I told you, was allowing just six points a game so far this year. And Jackson goes into Sekman and wins the district title 55-21. to 21. Big score.